And going back to your performance as well, you've also worked with some of my favorite artists of all time, Stevie Wonder being one of them actually as well. Stevie Wonder, George Michael, well, obviously Robbie Williams as well. How, what was it like working with such respected artists and amazing ones at that as well? Um, for George Michael and Robbie Williams were fairly, fairly similar experiences. Um, I mean, the, the work I've done with people like Stevie Wonder has generally been quite different. So I'll have been part of a, a setup. So he's brought in to do a TV show. I'm in the TV band or he's brought in to do a concert. You know, I can separate artists that I've worked with as a sort of backing performer in a way. And, and then people like Robbie and George, I've had a far more intimate working relationship with, if you like, you know, it's a rather different thing. Um, so as, as a studio musician, yeah, I was lucky to to work on, you know, the old old school TV. The Royal Variety Show was on last night, so I, I used to play on play on those. You know, mm. there'd be a whole host of artists coming that you got to play with, which was an incredibly exciting thing. And then special concerts sometimes they'd hire backing bands or whatever, and, and you'd get a call to do that. And then I was very involved with brass sections going on tour with various bands from, you know, Wham to the Who to uh, Matt Bianco and, and then Robbie. And then uh, Robbie and George probably are, are two slightly different artists for me because they were both artists that I worked with, you know, on a one-to-one -one basis. You know, George from extremely early on, even pre-Wham in his career when he was a young songwriter and didn't live far from where I grew up and where you live now. Mm. Um, and we worked together on some things and, and carried on. And, and, and really, you know, right to the end, I, I was still working with him on excuse me, on various projects, um, doing some orchestration, doing some conducting for him. Um, and likewise, Robbie, I've, I've, you know, been involved with arranging music for him and, and a little bit of co-production since, since Let Me Entertain You, you know, mm -hmm. all of those years. I think, I think there's, you know, maybe only two albums I wasn't involved in. And, and when the swing stuff came along, that was my, you know, we already had a relationship. So with my knowledge and my experience of doing that, I, I guess I was a, hopefully a fairly natural choice and you know I had, a, I had a trust you know a lot of it's building up a trust with with people you know it's uh, it becomes personal as well as business when you're working for a long time so you you know you have to have to do the right things and behave in the right way and, and understand understand their position which is extremely different to to my position you know and their perspective mm. I was listening to the Robbie Williams albums last night and um, Swing Both Ways and Swing When You're Winning, both amazing albums. What were they like to work on? Oh, yeah, amazing. Really great, great times, you know. You know, up there as highlights uh, of, of career. Um, I think it's, it's fair to say that, that when you're working with someone that's, uh, you know, as, as big an artist, you know, you have the luxury of a, of a nice budget. You can kind of you know, write your own dream, if you like. So mm -hmm. recording in Capitol Records with the best musicians in, in, in Los Angeles, you know, and, and then, you know, now I'm sitting here with COVID and I'm phoning up mates to, to record some trombone and sax in their own bedrooms. <laughs> um, <clears throat> they're just as good a players, and it's, but he doesn't have that overall kind of quite that magic, exciting, exciting factor. So, so yeah, working on, on Rob's swing stuff was, was just fantastic. You know, we, I did a bit last year, we did, we did uh, some stuff on the Christmas album. And, you know, he's, he's one of those uh, pop artists, one of the few really, in my opinion, that has a, a real good understanding of, of, of swing, jazz, whatever you like, that kind of music. He grew up with it. And, and it's, it's, it's a different, it's a different medium. It's different to pop music. Mm. And, and I think, you know, some pop artists have fallen a little flat trying to do that. And, you know, others, others do it well. But I think Rob in particular has a, has a really good understanding of that storytelling, um, crooning, swing, you know, romance, that, that genre of music, you know, probably largely like me through his dad, you know, Pete, who was a cabaret singer, crooner, whatever you want, like club singer. Um, and, and, I'm pretty sure his story would be similar to mine of how he got to listen to it. It's like, here, son, listen to this, you know, and, and, and he, it's, it stood him in good stead. And, you know, the thing I'm most proud about really of that swing album is that it seemed to seem to reignite that, that music um, and bring it to a whole new generation of people mm. and, 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 and a lot of artists and, and songs that may have disappeared. I think Rob was largely responsible for, for relaunching you know a, a whole a whole catalogue of amazing music to a whole new generation mm. 
When, when you work on such say, big budget projects like that, do you get the chance to kind of handpick who you want to work with in terms of musicians? Or do you say, okay, I need 20 brass members for this particular project and then let them choose who they work with? I uh, pretty much work in collaboration with contractors and, you know, I usually know who I want. Okay. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, I even find myself writing specifically for certain players. You know, I've, I've always maintained a close relationship with the musicians I work with. I mean, it, it doesn't always work out if I'm in a, in a place that I don't know the musicians, but I'll still try and do research and, and get the right people for the right job. That's important. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, it hasn't always worked out. You get in various situations for various reasons, sometimes aesthetic, sometimes, sometimes whatever, but you haven't, if you haven't got the right people there to do the job, then, then your, your job's much more difficult and, and the end result is not so good. And, and people like me, we work on our, on our results, you know, our reputation is, is everything. Things need to go well. You know, if you haven't got the right musicians that are equipped to do a job in a certain time, you know, big budget projects, you know, musicians, you know, they, they need to be the finest. They're under pressure. You know, you have a whole orchestra sitting in there. You've got someone that can't really play their part. You know, it's, it, the thing's ruined and, and mm. that's expensive and embarrassing and, and disappointing and awful for them as well. You know, and, and this, these aren't necessarily people that aren't brilliant musicians, but they might just be in the, in the wrong place for them. You know, there's certain, certain drummers that are absolutely world class, amazing people but you wouldn't book them on a big band session, you know, under a time pressure. Likewise, the big band drummer, you probably wouldn't put on a, on a six day stint at Madison Square Garden with a heavy rock band, you know, it's, mm. it's different things. And I don't know everything, but the stuff I'm involved in, I, I, I'm very meticulous and I do a lot of research and I work with a couple of trusted contractors, both here and in the States, um, who know what I want and, and we work through, through a list.